Click the link in the description to sign up for a free 30-day trial from audiobooks.com. Dramatis Personae of the Tempest by William Shakespeare Alonzo, King of Naples Read by Craig Franklin Sebastian, his brother Read by Thomas Peter Prospero, the right Duke of Milan Read by Brad Antonio, his brother The usurping Duke of Milan Read by Sonia Ferdinand, son to the King of Naples Read by Thomas Peter Gonzalo, an honest old counsellor Read by Craig Franklin Adrian, a lord Read by Brad Francisco, a lord Read by Thomas Peter Caliban, a savage and deformed slave Read by Thomas Peter Trinculo, a jester Read by Craig Franklin Stefano, a drunken butler Read by Brad Master of a ship Read by Brad Boson, read by Craig Franklin First Mariner, read by Sonia Second Mariner, read by Brad Third Mariner, read by Craig Franklin Fourth Mariner, read by Thomas Peter Miranda, daughter to Prospero, read by Sonia Ariel, an airy spirit, read by Sonia Iris, a spirit, read by Craig Franklin Ceres, a spirit Read by Thomas Peter. Juno, a spirit. Read by Sonia. Stage directions. Read by Craig Franklin. End of Dramatis Personae. Act One of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Act One. Scene One. On a ship at sea. A tempestuous noise of thunder and lightning heard. Enter a shipmaster and a boatswain. Boatswain! Here, mister, what cheer? Good, speak to the mariners. Fall to it, Yarley, or we run ourselves aground. Beaster! Beaster! Exit. Enter mariners. Hi, my heart! Cheerly, cheerly, my heart, yeah, yeah. Take in the topsail, tend to the master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Ferdinand, Gonzalo, and others. Good boatswain, have care. Where's the master? Play the men. I pray now keep below. Where is the master, Bosun? Do you not hear him? You mar our labour, keep your cabins, you do assist the storm. Nay, good, be patient. When the sea is hence, what cares these roarers for the name of king? To cabin, silence, trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I more love than myself. You are a counsellor. If you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thanks you have lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour. If it so hap, cheerly good hearts, out of our way, I say. Exit. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. Stand fast, good fate, to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable, for our own doth little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Exeunt. Re-enter Boatswain. Down with the topmast! Yeah! Lower! Lower! Bring her to try with main course! A cry within. Her plague upon this howling! They are louder than the weather or our office! 
re-enter sebastian antonio and gonzalo yet again what do you hear shall we give o'er and drown have you a mind to sink a uh, pox o' your throat you bawling blasphemous and charitable dog work you then hang care hang you horse and insolent noise-maker we are less afraid to be drowned than thou art i'll warrant you for drowning though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell and as leaky as an unstenched wench lay her a hold a hold set her two courses off to sea again lay her off enter mariners wet all lost to prayers to prayers all lost what must our mouths be cold the king and prince at prayers let's assist them for our cases as theirs i'm out of patience we are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards this white-chapped rascal would thou mightst lie drowning the washing of ten tides he'll be hanged yet though every drop of water swear against it and gape at widest to glut him a confused noise within mercy on us we split we split farewell my wife and children farewell brother we split we split we split let's all sink with the king let's take leave of him exeunt antonio and sebastian now would i give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground long heath brown furs anything the will's above be done but i would fain die a dry death exeunt scene two the island before prospero's cell enter prospero and miranda if by your art my dearest father you have put the wild waters in this roar allay them the sky it seems would pour down stinking pitch but that the sea mounting to the welkin's cheek dashes the fire out oh i have suffered with those that i saw suffer a brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces oh the cry did knock against my very heart poor souls they perished had i been any god of power i would have sunk the sea within the earth or ere it should the good ship so have swallowed and the frothing souls within her be collected no more amazement tell your piteous heart there's no harm done oh woe the day no harm i have done nothing but in care of thee of thee my dear one thee my daughter who art ignorant of what thou art not knowing of whence i am nor that i am more better than prospero master of a full poor cell and thy no greater father more to know did never meddle with my thoughts tis time i should inform thee farther lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me so lays down his mantle lie there my art wipe thou thine eyes have comfort the direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee i have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul no not so much perdition as an hair be tid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry which thou sawst sink sit down for thou must now know father you have often begun to tell me what i am but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition concluding stay not yet the hours now come the very minute bids thee ope thine ear obey and be attentive canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell 
I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Of anything the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance. Tis far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayst. But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan, and a prince of power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and his only heir and princess no worse issued. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence? Or blessed wast we did? Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence, but blessedly holp hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think at the teen that I had turned you to, which is from my remembrance. Please you, father. My brother, and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom, next thyself, of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state, as at that time, through all the signories it was the first, and Prospero the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts without a parallel, those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected how to grant suits, how to deny them, whom to advance, and whom to trash for overtopping, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or changed them, or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office, set all hearts of the state to what tune pleased his ear that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verdure out on thou attends not how oh, good sir i do i pray thee mark me i thus neglecting worldly ends all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that which but by being so retired or prized all popular rate in my false brother awaked an evil nature and my trust like a good parent did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was which had indeed no limit a confidence sans bound he being thus lauded not only with what my revenue yielded but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory, to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke. Out to the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative. Hence his ambition growing, dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness to have no scream between this part he played and him he played it for he needs will be absolute milan me poor man my library was dukedom large enough of temporal royalties he thinks me now incapable confederates so dry he was for sway with the king of naples to give him annual tribute do him homage subject his coronet to his crown and bend the dukedom yet unbowed alas poor milan to most ignoble stooping oh the heavens mark his condition and the event then tell me if this might be a brother 
i should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother good wombs have borne bad sons now the condition this king of naples being an enemy to me inveterate hearkens my brother's suit which was that he in lieu of the premises of homage and i know not how much tribute should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair milan with all the honours on my brother whereon a treacherous army levied one midnight fated to the purpose did antonio open the gates of milan and to the dead of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self alack for pity i not remembering how i cried out then will cry it over again it is a hint that rings mine eyes to it here a little further and then i'll bring thee to the present business which now's upon us without the which this story were most impertinent wherefore did they not that hour destroy us well demanded wench my tale provokes that question dear they durst not so dear the love my people bore me nor set a mark so bloody on the business but with colours fairer painted their foul ends in few they hurried us aboard a bark bore us some leagues to sea where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat not rigged nor tackle sail nor mast the very rats instinctively have quit it there they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong alack what trouble was i then to you oh what cherubin thou wast that did preserve me thou didst smile infused with a fortitude from heaven when i have decked the sea with drops full salt under my burden groaned which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue how came we ashore by providence divine some food we had and some fresh water that a noble neapolitan gonzalo out of his charity who being then appointed master of this design did give us with rich garments linen stuffs and necessaries which since have steaded much so of his gentleness knowing i loved my books he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that i prize above my dukedom would i might but ever see that man now i arise resumes his mantle sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow here in this island we arrived and here have i thy schoolmaster made thee more profit than other princesses can that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful heavens thank you for it and now i pray you sir for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea-storm know thus far forth by accident most strange bountiful fortune now my dear lady hath mine enemies brought to this shore and by my prescience i find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star whose influence if now i court not but omit my fortunes will ever after droop here cease more questions thou art inclined to sleep tis a good dullness and give it way i know thou canst not choose Miranda sleeps. Come away, servant. Come. I am ready now. Approach my Ariel. Come. Enter Ariel. All hail, great master. Grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire to ride on the curled clouds to thy strong bidding task ariel and all his quality hast thou spirit performed to point the tempest that i bade thee to every article i boarded the king's ship 
now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'd divide and burn in many places, on the top mast, the yards, and the bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit! Who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad, and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged in the foaming brine, and quit the vessel. Then, all afire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then, like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Why, that's my spirit. But was not this nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they aerial safe? Not a hair perish. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou badest me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Of the kingship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbour is the king's ship. In the deep nook, where once thou callest me up at midnight to fetch you from the still vexed Bermoothis. There she stood, the merriness all under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labour, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. <sighs> is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, Moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies made thee no mistakings, served without all grudge or grumblings. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and think'st it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier. Or was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgetst. This damned witch Sycorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing, from Argier thou knowest, was banished. 
for one thing she did they would not take her life is not this true ay sir this blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child and here was left by the sailors thou my slave as thou reports thyself was then her servant and for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands refusing her grand hests she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years within which space she died and left thee there where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill-wheels strike then was this island save for the sun that she did litter here a freckled whelp hag born not honoured with a human shape yes caliban her son dull thing i say so he that caliban whom now i keep in service thou best knowest what torment i did find thee in thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears it was a torment to lay upon the damned which sycorax could not again undo it was mine art when i arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out i thank thee master if thou more murmurest i will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters pardon master i will be correspondent to command and to my spiriting gently do so and after two days i will discharge thee that's my noble master what shall i do say what what shall i do go make thyself like a nymph of the sea be subject to no sight but thine and mine invisible to every eyeball else go take this shape and hither come in go hence with diligence exit ariel awake dear heart awake thou hast slept well awake oh, oh. oh the strangeness of your story put heaviness in me shake it off come on we'll visit caliban my slave who never yields us kind answer oh tis a villain sir i do not love to look on but as tis we cannot miss him he does make our fire fetch in our wood and serves in offices that profit us what ho slave caliban thou earth thou speak caliban within there is wood enough within come forth i say there's other business for thee come thou tortoise when re-enter ariel like a water nymph fine apparition my quaint ariel hark in thine ear my lord it shall be done exit thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam come forth enter caliban as wicked dear as e'er my mother brushed with raving's feather from unwholesome fen drop on you both the south-west blow on ye and blister you all o'er for this be sure to-night thou shalt have cramps side stitches that shall pen thy breath up urchin shell for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb each pinch more stinging than bees that made em i must eat my dinner this island's mine by sycorax my mother which thou takest from me when thou camest first thou strokest me and latest much of me wouldst give me water with berries and, and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night and then i loved thee and showed thee all the qualities of the isle the fresh springs brian pits barren place and fertile cursed be i that did so all oh, the charms of sycorax toads beetles bats light on you 
for I am over the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you star me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honour of my child. Ha, 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 would it been done, thou didst prevent me. I had peopled us this isle with calibans. Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness wilt not take, being capable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known, but thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that int which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison. Ye taught me language, and my prophet aunt is, I ne had a curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. <laughs> Hag seed hence. Fetch us in fuel, and be quick, that best, to answer other business. Shrugst thou, Malice? If thou neglect'st, or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. Aside. I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my damn's god, Setibus and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Exit Caliban. Re-enter Ariel, invisible, playing and singing. Ferdinand following. Should this music be in the air or the earth? It sounds no more, and sure it waits upon some god of the island, sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck. This music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. Full fallen five thy father lies, of his bones a coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade, but the sufferer's he change into something. The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I, I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest yond. What is it? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about! Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form but 
this is spirit no wench it eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have such this gallant which thou seest was in the wreck and but he's something stained with grief that's beauty's canker thou mightst call him a goodly person he hath lost his fellows and strays about to find him i might call him a thing divine for nothing natural i ever saw so noble prospero aside it goes on i see as my soul prompts it spirit fine spirit i'll free thee within two days for this most sure the goddess on whom these airs attend vouchsafe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island and that you will some good instruction give how i may bear me here my prime request which i do last pronounce is o oh, you wonder if you be made or no <sighs> no wonder sir but certainly a maid my language heavens i am the best of them that speak this speech would i but where it is spoken how the best what wert thou if the king of naples heard thee a single thing as i am now that wanders to hear thee speak of naples he does hear me and that he does i weep myself am naples who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked alack for mercy yes faith and all his lords the duke of milan and his brave son being twain prospero aside the duke of milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now it were fit to do it at the first sight they have changed eyes delicate ariel i'll set thee free for this to ferdinand a word good sir i fear you have done yourself some wrong a word why speaks my father so ungently this is the third man that ever i saw the first that ever i sighed for pity move my father to be inclined my way oh if a virgin and your affection not gone forth i'll make you the queen of naples soft sir one word more aside they are both in either's powers but this swift business i must uneasy make lest too light winning make the prize light to ferdinand one word more i charge thee that thou attend me thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me the lord aunt no as i am a man there's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple if the ill spirit have so fair a house good things will strive to dwell with it follow me speak not you for him he's a traitor come i'll manacle thy neck and feet together sea water shalt thou drink thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels withered roots and husks wherein the acorn cradled follow no i will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power draws and is charmed from moving o oh, dear father make not too rash a trial of him for he is gentle and not fearful What? i say my foot my tutor put thy sword up traitor who makes the show but dares not strike thy conscience is so possessed with guilt come from thy ward for i can here disarm thee with his stick and make thy weapon drop beseech you father hence hang not on my garments sir have pity i'll be his surety silence one word more shall make me chide thee if not hate thee what an advocate for an impostor hush thou thinks there is no more such shapes as he having seen but him and caliban foolish wench to the most of men this is a caliban and they to him are angels my affections are then most humble i have no ambition to see a goodlier man come on obey 
Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigour in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, and all this man's threats, to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid. All corners else of the earth let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. Prospero aside. It works. To Ferdinand. Come on, thou hast done well, fine Ariel. To Ferdinand. Follow me. To Ariel. Hark what thou else shalt do me. Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir, than he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow, speak not for him. Exeunt. End of Act One. Act Two of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Act Two. Scene One. Another part of the island. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others. Be seat you, sir, be merry. You have cause. So have we all of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss, our hint of woe is common every day some sailor's wife the masters of some merchant and the merchant have just our theme of woe but for the miracle i mean our preservation few in millions can speak like us then wisely good sir weigh our sorrow with our comfort prithee peace he receives comfort like cold porridge the visitor will not give him over so. Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it will strike. Sir. One. Tell. When every grief is entertained that's offered, comes to the entertainer. A dollar. Dollar comes to him, indeed. You have spoken truer than you purposed. You have taken it wiselier than I meant you should therefore my lord fie what a spendthrift is he of his tongue i prithee spare well i have done but yet he will be talking which of he or adrian for a good wager first begins to crow the old cock the cockerel done the wager <laughs> laughter a match though this island seemed to be desert <laughs> so you're paid uninhabitable and almost inaccessible yet yet he could not miss it it must needs be of subtle tender and delicate temperance temperance was a delicate wench ay and subtle as he most learnedly delivered the air breathes upon us here most sweetly as if it had lungs and rotten ones <sighs> or as twere perfumed by a fan here is everything advantageous to life true save means to live of that there is none or little how lush and lusty the grass looks how green the ground indeed is tawny with an eye of greed in it mm. he misses not much no he doth but mistake the truth totally but the rarity of it is which is indeed almost beyond credit as many vouched rarities are that our garments being as they were drenched in the sea hold notwithstanding their freshness and glosses being rather new dyed than strained with salt water if but one of his pockets could speak would it not say he lies ay or very falsely pocket up his report 
Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Africa at the marriage of the king's fair daughter Claribel to the king of Tunis. Twas a sweet marriage, and we prosper well at our return. Tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen. Not since widow Dido's time. Widow? A pox of that. How came that widow in? Widow Dido? What if he had said widower Aeneas too? <laughs> Good lord, how you take it. Widow Dido, say you? You make me study of that. She was of Carthage, not of Tunis. This Tunis, sir, is Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. Ha! <laughs> His word is more than the miraculous harp. He hath raised the wall and houses too. What impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will carry this island home in his pocket and give it his son for an apple. <laughs> and sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Aye. Why, in good time. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we were at Tunis, at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that ever came there. Bait, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido. Aye, Widow Dido. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a sort? That sort was well fished for. When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into mine ears, against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there, for coming thence my son is lost, and in my rate she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. O oh, thou mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water whose enmity he flung aside and breasted the surge most swollen that met him. His bald head above the contentious waves he kept and oared himself with his good arms and lusty stroke to the shore that o'er his wave-worn bases bowed as stooping to relieve him i not a doubt he came alive to land no no he's gone sir you may thank yourself for this great loss that would not bless our europe with your daughter but rather lose her to an african where she, at least, is banished from your eye, who hath cause to wet the grief on't. Prithee, peace. You are kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed between loathness and obedience, at which end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear, for ever. Milan and Naples have more widows in them of this business-making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own so is the dearest of the loss my lord sebastian the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and time to speak it in you rub the saw when you should bring the plaster <laughs> very well and most chirurgically it is foul weather in us all good sir when you are cloudy foul weather <laughs> very foul <laughs> Had I plantation of this isle, my lord? He'd sow it with nettle seed. Or docks, or mallows. And were the king on't, what would I do? Scape being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth I would be contraries, execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate, letters should not be known. Riches, poverty and use of service none contract succession born bound of land tilth vineyard none no use of metal corn or wine or oil no occupation all men idle all and women too 
but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. <laughs> Yet he would be king on The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce, without sweat or endeavour, treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine, would I not have. But nature should bring forth of its own kind all foison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects? None, man. All idle. Whores and knaves. I would, with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Save his majesty. <laughs> Long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? Prithee no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe, your highness, and did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. <laughs> Twas you we laughed at. Who, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you? so you may continue and laugh at nothing still what a blow was there given and it had not fallen flat long you are gentlemen of brave metal you would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue it in five weeks without changing enter ariel invisible playing solemn music we went so and then go a bat fowling nay my good lord be not angry. No, I warrant you, I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. All sleep, except Alonso, Sebastian, and Antonio. What? All so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, but it doth it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Wondrous heavy. Alonso sleeps. Exit Ariel. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face, what thou shouldst be. The occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language. Thou speakst out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose to be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep, die rather, wingst whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. There's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too if heed me which to do trebles thee over well i have stared in water i'll teach you how to flow do so to ebb hereditary sloth instructs me oh if you but knew how you the purpose cherish while thus you mock it how in stripping it you more invest it Ebbing men, indeed, most often do so near the bottom run by their own fear or sloth. Prithee, say on. 
the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee, and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance, this who shall be of as little memory when he is earthed, hath here almost persuaded, for he is a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade the king his son's alive tis as impossible that he is undrowned as he that sleeps here swims i have no hope that he is undrowned oh out of that no hope what great hope have you no hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond but doubt discovery there will you grant with me that ferdinand is drowned he is gone then tell me who's the next heir of naples clarabel she that is queen of tunis she that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life she that from naples can have no note unless the sun were post the man in the moon's too slow till new-born chins be rough and razorable she that from whom we all were sea swallowed though some cast again and by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue what to come in yours and my discharge what stuff is this how say you tis true my brother's daughter's queen of tunis so is she heir of naples twixt which regions there is some space a space whose every cubit seems to cry out how shall that claribel measure us back to naples keep in tunis and let sebastian wake say this were death that now has seized them why they were no worse than now they are there be that can rule naples as well as he that sleeps lords that can prate as amply and unnecessarily as this gonzalo i myself could make a chuff of as deep chatter oh that you bore the mind that i do what a sleep were this for our advancement do you understand me methinks i do and how does your content tender your own good fortune i remember you did supplant your brother prospero true and look how well my garments sit upon me much fitter than before my brother's servants were then my fellows now they are my men but for your conscience <laughs> ay sir where lies that if twere a kype would put me to my slipper but i feel not this deity in my bosom twenty consciences that stand twixt me and milan candid be they and melt ere they molest here lies your brother no better than the earth he lies upon if he were that which now he's like that's dead whom i with disobedient steel three inches of it can lay to bed forever whilst you doing thus to the perpetual wink for aim i put this ancient morsel this sir prudence who should not upbraid our course for all the rest they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk they'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour 
thy case dear friend shall be my precedent as thou gardst milan i'll cap by naples draw thy sword one stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest and i the king shall love thee draw together and when i rear my hand do you the like to fall it on gonzalo oh uh, but one word they talk apart re-enter ariel invisible my master through his art foresees the danger that you his friend are in and sends me forth for else his project dies to keep them living sings in gonzalo's ear while you here do snoring lie open-eyed conspiracy his time doth take if of life you keep a care shake a slumber and beware awake awake then let us both be sudden now good angels preserve the king they wake why how now ho awake why are you drawn wherefore this ghastly looking what's the matter uh, whilst we stood here secure at your repose even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls or r rather lions it did not wake you it struck my ear most terribly i heard nothing oh twas a din to fry the monster's ear to make an earthquake sure it was the roar of a whole herd of lions heard you this gonzalo upon my honour sir i heard a humming and that a strange one too which did awake me i shaked you sir and cried as mine eyes opened i saw their weapons drawn there was a noise that verily tis best we stand upon our guard or that we quit this place let's draw our weapons lead off this ground and let's make further search for my poor son heavens keep him from these beasts for he is sure i the island lead away prospero my lord shall know what i have done so king go safely on to seek thy son exeunt scene two another part of the island enter caliban with a burden of wood a noise of thunder heard all reinfections that the sun sucks up from bogs fens flats on prosper for and make him by inch meal or disease <sighs> his spirits hear me and yet i needs must curse but they'll not pinch fright me with urchin shows pitch me in the mire nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way unless he bid em but for every trifle are they set upon me sometime like apes that mow and shout at me and after bite me then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall sometime am i all wound with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness enter trinculo lo now lo. here comes the spirit of east and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly i'll fall flat but chance he will not mind me there's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all and another storm brewing i hear it sing in the wind yon same black cloud yon huge one looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor if it should thunder as it did before i know not where to hide my head yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by palefuls what have we here a man or a fish dead or alive a fish he smells like a fish a very ancient and fish-like smell a kind of knot of the newest poor john a strange fish 
were i in england now as once i was and had but this fish painted not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver there would this monster make a man any strange beast there makes a man when they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar they will lay out ten to see a dead indian legged like a man and his fins like arms warmer my troth i do now let loose my opinion hold it no longer this is no fish but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt alas the storm is come again my best way is to creep under his gavardine there is no other shelter hereabout and misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows i will here shroud till the dregs of the storm be past enter stefano singing a bottle in his hand i shall no more to see to see here shall i die ashore this is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral well here's my comfort the master the swabber the boatswain and i the gutter and his mate loved Maumeg and marion and marjorie but none of us cared for kate for she had a tongue with a tang would cry to a sailor go hang she loved not the savour of tar nor of pitch yet a tailor might scratch her wherever she did itch then to see boys and let her go hang ah, this is a scurvy tune too but here's my comfort do not torment me <laughs> what's the matter have we devils here do you put tricks on with savages and men of inda eh? i have not scaped drowning to be afeard now of your four legs for it hath been said as proper a man as ever went on four legs cannot make him give ground and it shall be said so again while stefano breathes at its nostrils the spirit torments me oh. this is some monster of the isle with four legs who hath got as i take it an ague where the devil should he learn our language i will give him some relief if it be but for that if i can recover him and keep him tame and get to naples with him he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on neat's leather do not torment me prithee i'll bring my wood home fast he's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest he shall taste of my bottle if he have never drunk wine afore it will go near to remove his fit if i can recover him and keep him tame i will not take too much for him he shall pay for him that hath him and that soundly thou dost me yet but little hurt thou wilt anon i know it by thy trembling now prosper works upon thee come on your ways open your mouth here is that which will give language to you cat open your mouth this will shake your shaking i can tell you and that soundly you cannot tell who's your friend open your chaps again i should know that voice it should be but he is drowned and there are devils oh dear fend me four legs and two voices a most delicate monster his forward voice now is to speak well of his friend his backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract if all the wine in my bottle will recover him i will help his egg you come oh. amen i will pour some in thy other mouth stefano oh, doth thy other mouth call me mercy mercy this is a devil and no monster i will leave him i have no long spoon 
stefano if thou beest stefano touch me and speak to me for i am trinculo be not afeard thy good friend trinculo if thou beest trinculo come forth i'll pull thee by the lesser legs if any be trinculo's legs these are they thou art very trinculo indeed how earnest thou to be the siege of this moon-calf can he vent trinculo's ha ah, took him to be killed with a thunderstroke but art thou not drowned stefano i hope now thou art not drowned is the storm overblown i hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm and art thou living stefano oh stefano two neapolitans scaped prithee do not turn me about my stomach is not constant caliban aside these be foreign things and if they be not sprites that a brave god and bear celestial liquor i will kneel to him how didst thou scape how camest thou hither swear by this bottle how thou camest hither i escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved o'er board by this bottle which i made of the bark of a tree with mine own hands since i was cast ashore i'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject for the liquor is not earthly here swear then how thou escapest swim ashore man like a duck i can swim like a duck i'll be sworn here kiss the book though thou canst swim like a duck thou art made like a goose oh stefano hast any more of this the whole butt man my cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid how now moon-calf how does thine egg you hast thou not dropped from heaven out of the moon i do assure thee i was the man of the moon when time was oh, i have seen thee in her and i do adore thee my mistress show me thee and thy dog and thy bush come swear to that kiss the book i will furnish it anon with new contents swear oh. by this good light this is a very shallow monster i have feared of him a very weak monster the man of the moon a most poor credulous monster well drawn monster in good sooth i'll show thee every fertile inch of the island and i will kiss thy foot i prithee be my god by this light a most perfidious and drunken monster whence god's asleep he'll rob his bottle i'll kiss thy foot i'll swear myself thy subject come on then down and swear i shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster a most scurvy monster i could find in my heart to beat him come kiss but that the poor monster's in drink an abominable monster i'll show thee the best springs i'll plug thee berries i'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough a plague upon the tyrant that i serve i'll bear him no more sticks but follow thee thou wondrous man a most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard oh, i prithee let me bring thee where crabs grow and i with my long nails will dig thee pig nuts show thee a jay's nest and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset i'll bring thee to clustering filberts and sometimes i'll get the young scammels from the rock wilt thou go with me i prithee now lead the way without any more talking trinculo the king and all our company else being drowned we will inherit here here bear my bottle fellow trinculo will fill him by and by again ah. farewell master farewell farewell a howling monster a drunken monster no my dams i'll make for fish nor fetch and firing at requiring nor scrape trencher nor wash dish ban ban cacala ban has a new master get a new man freedom hey they 
Heyday freedom! Freedom! Heyday freedom! Oh, brave monster! Lead the way! Exeunt. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Act Three. Scene One. Before Prospero's cell. Enter Ferdinand bearing a log. There be some sports are painful, and the labour delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labours pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crabbed, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work, and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget, but these sweet thoughts to even refresh my labours, most busy lest when I do it. Enter Miranda and Prospero at a distance unseen. Alas, now, pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burned up those logs that you are enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns, twill weep where having wearied you. My father is hard at study. Pray now, rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonour undergo, while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to it, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. No, no, mistress. Tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your head to say so. Admire it, Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration. With what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women, never any with so full so, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed, and put it to the foil. But you, ah, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remember, safe from my glass, mine own. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad, I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of but i prattle something too wildly and my father's precepts i therein do forget i am in my condition a prince miranda i do think a king oh i would not so and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth hear my soul speak the very instant that i saw you did my heart fly to your service there resides to make me slave to it and for your sake am i this patient log man do you love me o oh, heaven o oh, earth bear witness to this sound and crown would i profess with kind event if i speak true if hollowly 
invert what best is burdened me to mischief i beyond all limit of what else in the world to love prize honour you i am a fool to weep at what i am glad of fair encounter of two most rare affections heavens rain grace on that which breathes between em wherefore weep you at mine unworthiness that dare not offer what i desire to give and much less take what i shall die to want but this is trifling and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows hence bashful cunning and prompt me plain and holy innocence i am your wife if you will marry me if not i'll die your maid to be your fellow you may deny me but i'll be your servant whether you will or no my mistress dearest and i thus humble ever my husband then i with a heart as willing as bondage e'er of freedom here's my hand and mine with my heart in it and now farewell till half an hour hence a thousand thousand exeunt ferdinand and miranda severally so glad of this as they i cannot be who are surprised withal but my rejoicing at nothing can be more i'll to my book for yet ere supper-time must i perform much business appertaining exit scene two another part of the island enter caliban stefano and trinculo tell not me when the butt is out we will drink water not a drop before therefore bear up and board em servant monster drink to me servant monster the folly of this island they say there's but five upon this isle we are three of them if the other two be brained like us they stay at tossers drink servant monster when i bid thee thy eyes are almost set in thy head where should they be set else he were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack for my part the sea cannot drown me i swam ere i could recover the shore five and thirty leagues off and on by this light thou shalt be my lieutenant monster or my standard your lieutenant if you list he's no standard will not run monsieur monster no go neither but you'll lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither mooncalf speak once in thy life if thou beest a good mooncalf how does thy honour let me lick thy shoe i'll not serve him he is not valiant thou liest most ignorant monster i am in case to justle a constable why thou debauched fish thou was there ever man a coward that hath drunk so much sack as i to-day wilt thou tell a monstrous lie being but half a fish and half a monster lo how it mocks me wilt thou let him my lord lord quoth he that a monster should be such a natural lo let again bite him to death i prithee trinculo keep a good tongue in your head if you prove a mutineer the next tree the poor monster's my subject and he shall not suffer indignity i thank my noble lord wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit i made to thee marry will i kneel and repeat it i will stand and so shall trinculo enter ariel invisible as i told thee before i am subject to a tyrant a sorcerer that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island thou liest thou jesting monkey thou i would my valiant master would destroy thee 
I do not lie. Drink you low? If you trouble him any more in's tale, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing. Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say, by a sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord, I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayest knock a nail in day's head. <laughs> the liars, the what a poor ninny's this, thou scurvy patch! Oh, I do beseech thy greatness, give him blows, and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink not but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand I'll turn my mercy out to doors and make a stockfish of thee. Why, what did I? I? I did nothing. I'll go further off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that. Beats him. As you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie. Out of your wits and hearing, too. A pox on your bottle. This can sack and drinking do. A marine on your monster, and the devil take your fingers. Ha ha ha! Now, forward with your tail. Prithee, stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand farther. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him. Having first seized his books, or with a log bat his skull, or punch him with a stake, or cut his weasen with thy knife. <laughs> Remember first to possess his books, for without them he is but a sot as I am, nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. Burn by his books. He has brave utensils, for so he calls them, which, when he has a house, he'll deck with all. And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a nonpareil. Oh, I never saw a woman, but only Sycorax, my damn she. But she as far surpasseth Sycorax is great stuff's least. Is it so brave, alas? <laughs> oh, my lord. She will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth brave brood. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Uh, excellent. Give me thy hand. I am sorry I beat thee. But while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Ay, on mine honour. This will I tell my master. <laughs> thou makest me marry. <laughs> I am full of pleasure. L let us be jocund. Will ye throw the catch ye taught me but while here? At thy request, monster, I will do reason, any reason. Come on, Trinculo, let us sing. Floutum and scoutum and scoutum and floutum thought is free. That's not the tune. Ariel plays the tune on a table and pipe. What is this same? This is the tune of our catch, played by the picture of nobody. If thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, take and thou list. 
Oh, forgive me my sins. He that dies pays all debts. I defy thee. Mercy upon us. Art thou afeard? No, monster, not I. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs, that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then in dreaming the clouds me thought would open, show riches ready to drop upon me, that, when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it and have to do our work. Lead, monster, will follow. I would I could see this taborer. He lays it on. We'll come. I I'll follow, Stefano. Exeunt. Scene three. Another part of the island. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others. By your leaking, I can go no further, sir. My old bones ache. Here's a maze trod indeed through forthrights in meanders. By your patience, I needs must rest me. Old Lord, I cannot blame thee who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. He is drowned, whom thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. Antonio aside to Sebastian. I am right glad that he is so out of hope do not for one repulse forego the purpose that you resolve to effect sebastian aside to antonio the next advantage we will take thoroughly let it be to-night for now they are oppressed with travel they will not or cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh i say to-night no more solemn and strange music what harmony is this my good friends hark marvellous sweet music enter prospero above invisible enter several strange shapes bringing in a banquet they dance about it with gentle actions a salutation and inviting the king and company to eat they depart give us kind keepers heavens what were these ha, 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 a living drollery now i will believe that there are unicorns that in arabia there is one tree the phoenix throne one phoenix at this hour reigning there i'll believe both and what does else want credit come to me and i'll be sworn tis true Travellers never did lie, though fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, for certes these are people of the island, who, though they are of monstrous shape, yet note their manners are more gentle kind than of our human generation you shall find many nay almost any prospero aside honest lord thou hast said well for some of you there present are worse than devils i cannot too much muse such shapes such gestures and such sound expressing though they want the use of tongue a kind of excellent dumb discourse prospero aside praise in departing they furnished strangely Pech, no matter since they have left their vines behind for we have stomachs 
will please you taste of what is here not i faith sir you need not fear when we were boys who would believe that there were mountaineers dew lapped like bulls whose throats had hanged at em wallets of flesh or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breasts which now we find each putter out of five for one will bring us good warrant of i will stand to and feed although my last no matter since i feel the best is past brother my lord the duke stand to and do as we thunder and lightning enter ariel like a harpy claps his wings upon the table and with a quaint device the banquet vanishes you are three men of sin whom destiny that has to instrument this lower world and what is in it the never surfeited sea has caused to belch up you and on this island where man doth not inhabit you mongst men being most unfit to live i have made you mad and even with such like valor men hang and drown their probe selves alonzo sebastian and company draw their swords you fools i and my fellows are ministers of fate the elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds or with be mocked at stabs kill the still closing waters as diminish one dull that's in my plume my fellow ministers are like invulnerable if you could hurt your swords are now too massy for your strength and will not be uplifted but remember for that's my business to you that you three from milan did supplant good prospero exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child for which foul deed the powers delaying not forgetting have incensed the seas and shores yea all the creatures against your peace thee of thy son alonso they have bereft and do pronounce by me lingering perdition worse than any death can be at once shall step by step attend you and your ways whose wrath to guard you from which here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing he vanishes in thunder then to soft music enter the shapes again and dance with mocks and mouths and carry out the table bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed my ariel a grace it had devouring of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say so with good life and observation strange my meaner ministers their several kinds have done my high charms work and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions they now are in my power and in these fits i leave them while i visit young ferdinand whom they suppose is drowned and his and mine loved darling exit above in the name of something holy sir why stand you in this strange stare oh it is monstrous monstrous methought the billows spoke and told me of it the winds did sing it to me and the thunder that deep 
but dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of prosper it did bass my trespass therefore my son in the ooze is bedded and i'll seek him deeper than e'er plummet sounded and with him there lie muddied exit but one fiend at a time i'll fight their legions thou art i'll be thy second exeunt sebastian and antonio all three of them are desperate their great guilt like poison given to work a great time after now gins to bite the spirits i do beseech you that are of suppler joints follow them swiftly and hinder them from where this ecstasy may now provoke them to follow i pray you exeunt end of act three act four of the tempest by william shakespeare act four scene one before prospero's cell enter prospero ferdinand and miranda if i have too austerely punished you your compensation makes amends for i have given you here a third of mine own life or that for which i live who once again i tender to thy hand all thy vexations were but my trials of thy love and thou hast strangely stood the test here afore heaven i ratify this my rich gift o oh, ferdinand do not smile at me that i boast her off for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her i do believe it against an oracle then as my gift and thine own acquisition worthily purchased take my daughter but if thou dost break her virgin not before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy rite be ministered no sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow but barren hate sour-eyed disdain and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so loathly that you shall hate it both therefore take heed as hymen's lamps shall light you as i hope for quiet days fair issue and long life with such love as tis now the murkiest den the most opportune place the strong suggestion or worst a genius can shall never melt mine honour into lust to take away the edge of that day's celebration when i shall think or phoebus steeds are founded or night kept chained below fairly spoke sit then and talk with her she is thine own what ariel my industrious servant ariel enter ariel what would my potent master here i am thou and thy meaner fellows your last service did worthily perform and i must use you in such another trick go bring the rabble or whom i give thee power here to this place incite them to quick motion for i must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art it is my promise and they expect it from me presently i with a twink before you can say come and go and breathe twice and cry so so each one tripping on his toe will be here with mop and mow do you love me master no dearly my delicate ariel do not approach till thou dost hear me call well i conceive exit look thou be true do not give dalliance too much the rein the strongest oaths are straw to the fire of the blood be more abstemious or else good night your vow i warrant you sir the white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the art of my liver well now come my ariel bring a corollary rather than want a spirit appear and pertly no tongue all eyes be silent soft music enter iris Ceres, most bounteous lady thy rich leaves of wheat ripe barley fetches oats and peas thy turfy mountains where live nibbling sheep and flat meads thatched with stover them to keep 
They banks with pined and twiddled brims, which spongy April at thy best betrims, to make cold nymphs chaste crowns and thy broom groves, whose shadow the dismissed bachelor loves, being last lawn thy pole clipped vineyard and thy sea marge sterile and rocky hard, where thou thyself dost air the queen of the sky. Whose watery arch and messenger am I? Bids thee leave these and with her sovereign grace here on this grass plot in this very place to come and sport. Her peacocks fly amain. Approach, rich Ceres, her to entertain. Enter Ceres. Oh, many coloured messenger, the ne'er dost disobey the wife of Jupiter. Who, with thy saffron wings, upon my flowers, diffuses tiny drops, refreshing showers, and with each end of thy blue bow dost crown my bosky acres, and my unshrubbed down, rich scarf to my proud earth. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to estate, on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as thou dost know, do now attend the queen, since they did plot the means that dusky dis my daughter got, her and her blind boy scandaled company I have forsworn. Of her society be not afraid, I met her deity, cutting the clouds towards Paphos and her son, dove drawn with her. Here thought they to have done some wanton charm upon this man and maid, whose vows are that no bed right shall be paid, till Hymen's torch be lighted, but in vain Mars's hot minion is returned again. Her waspish-headed son has broke his arrows, swears he will shoot no more, but play with sparrows, and be a boy right out. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gate. Enter Juno. How does my bounteous sister go with me to bless this twain, that they may prosperous be? and honoured in their issue. Honour rich is marriage blessing, long continuance and increasing. Howly joys be still upon you. Juno sings her blessings on you. Earth increase voice and plenty, bombs and garners never empty, vines with clustering bunches growing, plants with woodly burden bowing, spring come to you at the farthest in the very end of harvest. Scarcity and want shall shun you. Ceres' blessing so is on you. This is a most majestic vision, and harmonious charmingly. May I be bold to think these spirits? Spirits, which by mine art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. So rare a wandered father and a wife makes this place paradise. Juno and Ceres whisper, and send Iris on employment. Sweet, now silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush, and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of the wintry brooks. With your sage crowns and ever harmless looks, leave your crisp channels 
and on this green land answer your summons. Juno does command. Come, temperate nymphs, and help to celebrate. A contract of true love, be not too late. Enter certain nymphs. You sunburned sickleman of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday, your rice straw hats put on, and these fresh nymphs encounter every one in country footing. Enter certain reapers, properly habited. They join with the nymphs in a graceful dance. Towards the end, whereof, Prospero starts suddenly and speaks, after which, to a strange, hollow, and confused noise, they heavily vanish. Prospero, aside. I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. To the spirits. Well done. Avoid. No more. This is strange. Your father's in some passion that wags him strongly. Never till this day saw I him touched with anger so distempered. You do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. My old brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell, and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We wish, wish your, your peace. peace. Exeunt. Come with a thought. I thank thee, Ariel. Come. Enter Ariel. Thy thoughts I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I, my commander, when I presented Ceres, I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again where thou didst leave these varlets. I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking, so full of valour that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I beat my table, at which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears that, calf-like, they my lowing followed, through tooth briars, sharp furzes, pricking goss and thorns, which entered their frail shins. At last I left them in the filthy mantle pool beyond your cell. There, dancing up to the chins, that the foul lake overstunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumpery in my house, go bring it hither, for stale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. Exit. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains you mainly taken, all, all lost, quite lost, and, as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I will plague them all even to roaring. 
re-enter Ariel, loaden with glistening apparel, etc. Come, hang them on this line. Prospero and Ariel remain invisible. Enter Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo, all wet. Prior, tread softly, that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We now are near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. Thou wert but a lost monster. Good my lord, give me thy favour still. Be patient. For the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Ay, but to lose our bottles in the pool. There is not only disgrace and dishonour in that monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wetting. Yet this is your harmless fairy monster. I will fetch off my bottle, though I be your ears for my labour. Prithee, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here, this is the mouth of the cell. No noise, and enter. Do that good mischief which may make this island thine own for ever. And I, thy Caliban, for I thy footlicker. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, King Stefano, oh, peer, oh, worthy Stefano, look what a wardrobe here is for thee. Let it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Oh, ho, monster, we know what belongs to a frippery. Oh, King Stefano. Put off that gown, Trinculo, by this hand I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. The dropsy drown this fool. What do you mean to dope this on such luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If he awake from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with pinches, make a strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Line is not this my jerkin. Now is the jerkin under the line. Now, Jerkin, you are like to lose your hair and prove a bald Jerkin. Do, do, we steal by line and level, and slight your grace. I thank thee for that jest. Here's a garment for't, which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steal by line and level is an excellent pass of paint. There's another garnet for it. Monster, come put some lime upon your fingers and away with the rest. I will have none on it. We shall lose our time and all be turned to barnacles or to apes with foreheads villainous low. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to carry this. And this. Aye, and this. A noise of hunters heard. Enter divers spirits in shape of dogs and hounds, and hunt them about. Prospero and Ariel setting them on. Hey, mountain, hey. Silver, there it goes, silver. Fury, fury, there, tyrant, there, hark, hark. Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo are driven out. Go charge my goblins that they grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews with aged cramps, and more pinch-spotted make them than pard or cat a mountain. Hark! They roar! Let them be hunted soundly. At this hour lie at my mercy all mine enemies, Shortly shall all my labours end, and thou shalt have the air at freedom. For a little follow, and do me service. Exeunt. End of Act 4.
Act Five of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Act Five, Scene One, Before the Cell of Prospero. Enter Prospero in his magic robes and Ariel. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not. My spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so when first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, in the lion grove which weather fans yourself. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay, but chiefly him that you termed, sir, the good old lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard, like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them, that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou, which art but air, a touch? a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, that relish all as sharply passion as they, be kindlier moved than thou art. Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason gainst my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They, being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Exit. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot to chase the ebbing Neptune, and to fly him when he comes back. You demi-puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, whereof the you not bites, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms, that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azured vault set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong based promontory have I made shake and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oped, and let him forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I here abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for. I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than ever did plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Solemn music. Re-enter Ariel before. Then... Alonso, with a frantic gesture attended by Gonzalo, Sebastian, and Antonio in like manner. Attended by Adrian and Francisco, they all enter the circle, 
which prospero had made and there stand charmed which prospero observing speaks a solemn air and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brains now useless boiled within thy skull there stand for you are spell stopped holy gonzalo honourable man mine eyes even sociable to the show of thine fall fellowly drops the charm dissolves apace and as the morning steals upon the night melting the darkness so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason o oh, good gonzalo my true preserver and a loyal sir to him thou followest i will pay thy graces home both in word and deed most cruelly didst thou alonzo use me and my daughter thy brother was a furtherer in the act thou art pinched for it now sebastian flesh and blood you brother mine that entertained ambition expelled remorse and nature who with sebastian whose inward pinches therefore are most strong would here have killed your king i do forgive thee unnatural though thou art their understanding begins to swell and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me ariel fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell i will discase me and myself present as i was some time milan quickly spirit thou shalt ere long be free ariel sings and helps to attire him where the sons their sakai in the cowslips bella lie there a couch when out to cry on the bed's back i do fly after summer merrily 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 shall i that's my dainty ariel i shall miss thee but yet thou shalt have freedom so 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 to the king's ship invisible as thou art there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches the master and the boatswain being awake enforce them to this place and presently i prithee i drink the air before me and return or ere your pulse twice beat exit all torment trouble wonder and amazement inhabits here some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country behold sir king the wronged duke of milan prospero for more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee i embrace thy body and to thee and thy company i bid a hearty welcome whether thou beest he or not or some enchanted trifle to abuse me as late i have been i know not thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood and since i saw thee the affliction of my mind amends with which i fear a madness held me this must crave and if this be at all a most strange story thy dukedom i resign and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs but how should prospero be living and be here first noble friend let me embrace thine age whose honour cannot be measured or confined <laughs> will this be or be not i'll not swear 
you do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain welcome my friends all aside to sebastian and antonio but you my brace of lords were i so minded i here could pluck his highness frown upon you and justify you traitors at this time i will tell no tales sebastian aside the devil speaks in him no for you most wicked sir whom to call brother would even infect my mouth i do forgive thy rankest fault all of them and require my dukedom of thee which perforce i know thou must restore if thou beest prospero give us particulars of thy preservation how thou hast met us here who three hours since were reckoned upon this shore where i have lost how sharp the point of this remembrance is my dear son ferdinand i am woe for it sir irreparable is the loss and patience says it is past her cure i rather think you have not sought her help of whose soft grace for the like loss i have her sovereign aid and rest myself content you the like loss as great to me as late and supportable to make the dear loss have i means much weaker than you may call to comfort you for i have lost my daughter a daughter oh heavens that they were living both in naples the king and queen there that they were i wish myself were muddled in that oozy bed where my son lies when did you lose your daughter in this last tempest i perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth their words are natural breath but howsoe'er you have been justified from your senses know for certain that i am prospero and that very duke which was thrust forth of milan who most strangely upon this shore where you were wrecked was landed to be the lord on't no more yet of this for tis a chronicle of day by day not a relation for a breakfast nor befitting this first meeting welcome sir this sells my court here have i few attendants and subjects none abroad pray you look in my dukedom since you have given me again i will requite you with as good a thing at least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me my dukedom here prospero discovers ferdinand and miranda playing at chess sweet lord you play me false <laughs> no my dearest love i would not for the world yes for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle and i would call it fair play if this prove a vision of the island one dear son shall i twice lose eh, a most high miracle <sighs> though the seas threaten they are merciful i have cursed them without cause kneels now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about arise and say how thou camest here oh wonder how many goodly creatures are there here how beauteous mankind is oh brave new world that has such people in it tis new to thee what is this maid with whom thou wast at play your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours is she the goddess that has severed us and brought us thus together sir she is mortal but by immortal providence she is mine i chose her when i could not ask my father for his advice nor thought i had one she is daughter to this famous duke of milan of whom so often i have heard renown but never saw before of whom i have received a second life and second father this lady makes him to me 
I am hers. But, oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoken ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this couple drop a blessed crown. For it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust from Milan, that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy, and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage did Clarabelle her husband find at Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife, where he himself was lost, Prospero his dukedom, in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Alonso to Ferdinand and Miranda. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Re-enter Ariel with the master and boatswain amazedly following. Oh, look, sir, look, sir. Here is more of us. I prophesied if a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now bless for me that swearest grace or board, not an oath on shore. Hast thou no mouth by land? What is the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company. The next our ship, which but three glasses since we gave out split, is tight and yea and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Ariel aside to Prospero. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. My tricksy spirit. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how come you hither? If I did think, sir, I were well awake, I'll strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and how we know not all clapped under hatches where but even now with strange and several noises of roaring shrieking howling jingling chains and more diversity of sounds all horrible we were awaked straightway at liberty where we in all her trim freshly beheld our royal good and gallant ship our master capering to eye her on a try so please you even in a dream were we divided from them and were brought moping hither ariel aside to prospero wast well done bravely my diligence thou shalt be free this is a strange maze as ere men trod and there is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of some oracle must rectify our knowledge sir my liege do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business at picked leisure which shall be shortly single i'll resolve you which to you shall seem probable of every these happened accidents till when be cheerful and think of each thing well aside to ariel come hither spirit set caliban and his companions free untie the spell exit ariel how fares my gracious sir there are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not re-enter ariel driving in caliban stefano and trinculo in their stolen apparel every man shift for all the rest and let no man take care for himself for all is but fortune coraggio bully monster coraggio if these be true spies which i wear in my head here's a goodly sight oh setebus these be brave spirits indeed how fond my master is 
I'm afraid he will chastise me. <laughs> what things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy em? Very like. One of them is a plain fish, and no doubt marketable. Mark but the badges of these men, my lords, then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother, was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, hath plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. Is this not Stefano, my drunken butler? He is drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinculo is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded him? How camest thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that I fear me will never out of my bones. I shall not fear fly-blowing. Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, touch me not. I am not Stefano, but a cramp. You'll be king of the isle, sirrah. I should have been a sore one then. This is a strange thing as e'er I looked on. Pointing to Caliban. He is as disproportioned in his manners as in his shape. Go, sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions, as you look to have my pardon trim it handsomely. Oh, that I will, and I'll be wise hereafter, and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to, away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stall it, rather. Exeunt Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as, I not doubt, shall make it go quick away. The story of my life, and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this isle, and in the morn I'll bring you to your ship, and so to Naples, where I have hope to see the nuptial of these our dear beloved solemnized, and thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious that shall catch your royal fleet far off. Aside to Ariel. My Ariel, chick, that is thy charge. Then to the elements be free, and fare thee well. Please you, draw near. Exeunt. Epilogue. Spoken by Prospero. Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have's mine own, which is most faint now, tis true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver dwell in this bare island by your spell, but release me from my bands with the help of your good hands, Gentle breath of yours, my sails, must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself, and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardoned be, let your indulgence set me free. End of Act Five. End of The Tempest by William Shakespeare.
Greatest Audiobooks is excited to partner with Audiobooks.com. Sign up for a free 30-day trial and get your first audiobook free. Cancel any time, no strings attached. Click below to get your free audiobook today.